Welcome back. Today we're going to take kind of a left turn, and this tutorial will be on the materials that we're going to use on our model. These materials will be uh, in place in lieu of textures for now. We'll keep materials on much of our model even after we've textured it. If you like these tutorials or find them helpful, then please remember to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell icon to be notified when I post new tutorials. Uh, I had originally planned on doing a lot more modeling today. Uh, and not that this ties into it, but my back is giving me problems today. And I went off on a whole different tangent yesterday and today. Today, uh, I've seen some people turning out uh, renders of their tutorial enterprises so far, and I've been thrilled to see what you guys have done. Uh, a lot of people on a lot of different forums have turned out a lot of great looking work. Uh, but I also noticed when I was doing my uh, renders, just to show you what something uh, looks like when I'm done with it, or show you what, it, what something can look like, um, I, I've been dissatisfied with my renders. So today, I figured I'd concentrate on uh, materials and, and a little bit on the warp engines. So the uh, first thing that we have up here is a Christmas tree light. Now, these are what Christmas tree lights pretty much looked like back in the 1960s. And I think that these uh, are extremely, this is extremely similar to uh, what was used in the warp engines uh, of the USS, uh, the 11-foot USS Enterprise model. Here are what Christmas tree lights look like today. Uh, and, and they're fine. They get the job done. They light up. They're easily replaceable. They don't go bad as quickly. But they don't have the same shape. And believe it or not, the shape is important. And I'll, I'll show you why in a little bit. Here are some more kind of old-fashioned looking uh, Christmas tree light bulbs. The shape is what's important. Of course, that's my Galileo 7 unfinished. I've still got to work on the door and another piece under here. May actually redo the whole thing, but uh, I guess it's just one of my renders. All right. Let's uh, fire up Blender. And go to our tutorial saucer. Our tutorial file. Okay. Um, first... I'm going to grab my hull because I, I've had a diffuse gray hull just for renders. And when I render, let's see here. It, uh, it looks like a kind of a gray blah uh, thing. And that's, that's okay, but we can do better. So, uh, Hang on. Gary Kerr uh, has is is a fan who has a deep and abiding love of the USS Enterprise's model as well, and he's had something that uh, fans other fans only dream about. He's had access to the eleven foot model a couple of times, at least two, if not three, uh, where he has literally been able to go and make measurements. Uh, he was instrumental in helping. Uh, find the colors and paint the newly restored uh, Enterprise for the Smithsonian uh, uh, last year. And here are some of the colors uh, that he grabbed uh, as they were, as, as they opened up the model. They found uh, some of the, uh, as you can see from the name, the pilot hull uh, blue-gray, which it is just this kind of standard gray. It looks like a kind of standard gray when it was filmed, especially against a blue screen. Uh, but he grabbed a bunch of other uh, colors and tried his level best to match them. Uh, I even have a, a picture somewhere. Well, oh, hang on. Always better to show rather than to tell. Gary went through uh, a fairly exhaustive process of trying to match all the different colors that he found 
on and inside the model as either they went down through the paint job when they were sanding or when they opened up the model and they found splashes of color from all the way back when the model was originally constructed. And this is just a start. Hang on. He did more and he tried to match them. So we get the benefit from his rather exhaustive work with these colors. So we won't get really into the uh, yellows, reds, and uh, aqua colors, well, at least not today. But for primary colors, and, and here's one that they did for digital artists, it, it's, it's okay, it's not exactly the same. But let's go to our model, and I've got the hull selected here, and you see hull gray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it so that it slightly more accurately depicts the uh, blue-green-gray of the production model, uh, which is different than the gray of the first pilot. All right, so... Up top, let's go to our, uh, well, hover over to probably says textures, but materials. Well, good. No, truth in advertising. And since I've selected my, my hull, you get to see what color I made it. And I just made it just to get through the tutorials, just a real simple diffuse uh, gray. Now, we're going to change that. We're going to most really good textures are at least... A simple mix. Uh, so we're going to pick a mix shader, and that gives you two uh, things to to add. Um, and the first one I'm going to grab is just a diffuse background. Uh, and on top of that, I've taken uh, Gary's samples that he uh, put out for us. And the one thing that one of the sample sheets has in common, with, uh, actually none of them were in common. So what I did was I took his uh, stuff and I sampled it in Photoshop and I, I grabbed some hex colors. They're the easiest to translate. So my interpretation, so this is not, again, this is, this is not accurate in any way, shape, or form. This is just my interpretation of what uh, Gary Kerr's exhaustive work should look like in Blender. Uh, so we've picked the mix shader, and the first one I picked a diffuse, and click on the color here, change this to hex, and type in the following number. So that's a 9EA, so 9 Enterprise Archive 7 Archive 2, right? And you get this blue, green, gray. Um, and I'm going to leave my roughness at zero because diffuse is already not shiny. And I'm going to go down here. I'm not going to change anything else yet. I'm going to grab the second shader and we're going to pick glossy. And we're going to leave CGX for now. And I'm going to put in the same hex. Now, I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but it's how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to leave this roughness to two. But I'm going to change the factor to 0.1. Now, you saw my regular old flat gray. Can't really see any details uh, before. And now I've changed the hull gray for, for all of it. Oh, the only other thing is down here. And when you're doing these, sometimes it helps to grab this, uh, this, this viewport color here grab the sampling and and just grab your your color from up here after you've made a change so that this kind of reflects this and it'll it'll look like that here and i'm going to go to rendered so let's it doesn't make that big of a difference yet but there's more and this is going to get really pretty complicated um but if I change the lighting, 
and uh, some of the rendering options, this will look very, very different. So we're going to do, uh, my goal is to do all of that uh, today, but we're going to keep changing materials. Well, tell you what, I guess let's, let's set up some lighting and uh, see if we can see if we can make our renders look a little better. All right, so believe it or not, I'm going to delete my sons. Uh, these are really usually pretty terrible for lighting. Um, so of course, if I try and render something now, it's going to be all black with a single red light that I've got. Uh, anyway, let's go back to wireframe. And shift S cursor to center. And we're going to add a mesh. We're going to add a plane. Three, rotate from 90, grab, move out here. And we're going to go to the object options. Remember to set your rendering uh, options to cycles. And then you'll get these cycles settings here. And we're going to turn off for this plane. We're going to turn off camera. And we don't want these planes to cast shadows. Then we're going to go back to textures. And we're going to create a new material. And I'm going to call this starlight. Instead of diffuse, we want emission. Leave it at white for now. And take this and make this, I don't know, 15, I suppose. Let's look where that is. So that's right on the hull, which is fine. But I want to see what this looks like when it's rendered. And this will give us something of an idea. Now, you'll notice with the different type of lighting, the gray on the hull already looks a little different. It's not that flat, featureless gray. We can see uh, the arm here. We can, we can see the, the shape of the hull a little better. And what's interesting is, although the lighting isn't complete yet, here on the neck, we can see where the curve fades out. And there's kind of a sheen. So even though this is all the same color, the front here looks different. And if we were to really do this upright, this front would be blue. And when we get to texturing, we'll make that blue. But for right now, this is, you can at least see a little more detail on the model. So now I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to grab it and move it in the X direction here. So now, if we go to kind of preview what it would look like if it was rendered, at least I'm rendering more of the model. Or, I'm sorry, I'm lighting more of the model. All right, great. Uh, to do the, again, to do this right, I'd probably make more lights and make them much, much smaller. But this will do for now. All right. Um, going to take both of these. going to go to the front. Now, this is going to sound a little weird, but we're going to make sure that you're on 3D cursor. And after you've selected both of those windows, actually, hang on, I'm going to just duplicate one of them. And I'm going to rotate negative 90. All right, so we've got one in the front, two on the side. I'm going to grab the two on the side. So that's shift, right mouse click on the second one, right? Go to three, rotate, and put this and rotate this up so that it's kind of shining down on the warp engines. All right, so if I go to one and I switch to rendered again, now we start to get some kind of familiar lighting effects on the Enterprise. We've got this white sheen from the lights running down the rounded warp engine. And we're casting shadows on the engineering hull and on the neck. You know, are we by any means finished? Oh, heck no. 
but the one light in front isn't doing bad. It's it's showing uh, it's it's lighting both the rim up front here and a little bit underneath. But for what we're going to do, we also want some light to hit here from kind of three quarters of an angle on. So I'm going to take this front light and duplicate it. I'm going to rotate 45 degrees and I'm going to kind of rotate this way so I can see. Yeah, it's going to hit three quarters on, which is which is good, but not perfect yet. So better yet, rotate negative 45, go back to where it was, go to one, rotate, and I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Not a lot, a little. Seven rotate 45 degrees. All right, so if I go back to one, and we go to our rendered view, this is now starting to look like how they used to light the Enterprise for the original series. If I take this out of perspective mode, well, out of orthographic mode, this isn't bad. You can actually do some renders, although not from the back, but from the front and side, and it would look fairly similar to what you saw during the run of the series. Why? Because they only ever shot from this side. Even when you saw what was supposed to be the port side, uh, it was the starboard side with the lettering backwards, and then they would flip the film. I think we talked about that before. All right. So just a couple of more. I'm going to take one of these, duplicate it, rotate 90 degrees, but not exactly where I want it. So I'm going to grab this in the Y direction and then, uh, well, center that up a little better. Grab Y and then grab X and move this back. Let's take a look. Good, it's shining kind of down uh, on there, but I'm going to take this off of 3D, of, I'm sorry, off of the 3D cursor, make it bounding box. I'm going to go to Control-3, and I'm going to scale this down. I don't want this too bright. And I'm going to duplicate that. Go back to 3D cursor, rotate, and rotate this down. Basically, I want this shining on this curved area here. So, if we ever do anything from kind of underneath, we'll be able to see some detail here. Not a great amount, but some. Also, this is going to help if we do any rendering of the shuttle bay. So we've got some nice shadows casting, making this look a little more like a real, uh, uh, an object in the real world. All right, so it's a, it's a start. Next, let's see. I don't want to give you anything too wacky yet, so let's just do, let's just do the planetary sensor here. So this is basically just frosted glass and right now of course I've just got it flat white which will never do um, as a matter of fact let's uh, let's hit plus here on our dome sensor white right and instead what we're going to do is we're going to change the name we're going to call this frosted glass and we're going to go down here and instead of diffuse we're actually going to pick glass we're not going to change the color. Uh, and for now, we're not even going to change IOR. But what we are going to do is change the roughness. And we're going to take that to something like 0.8. So now, if we were to render this, it would not look like anything at all, really. Yeah. It's just kind of transparent, but with the selections that we've got for everything... It's not really going to give us much of anything, and it's going to have a lot of speckling and so on. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect that, Shift-A, and we're going to add 
a sphere. And it really doesn't matter how, how smooth it is, but we're going to scale this down. And tab into it. Deselect uh, all the verts, and I'm going to pick everything above the center line of this, and I'm going to delete the verts. Okay, cool. Tab, grab Z, and I'm going to place it down here. And this is actually inside this dome that we built. I'm going to go to bounding box center. I'm going to scale Z. And I'm going to bring this down. And then I'm going to scale the whole thing down just, uh, just a bit. Scale Z maybe a little. All right, cool. Now, we're going to create a new material. So, new. And we're going to call this uh, just green light. Or better yet, green sensor light. So we'll have other green lights. Obviously, we don't want diffuse. We want emission. And I'm going to... It really doesn't matter. I just want it kind of green. And not excessively bright. Hang on one second. To match what I'm going to show you later, I am actually going to put a hex color in here. Alright. So, that was B like Brown, F like Frank, E like Echo, 7, C like Charlie, 1. Not that it's important. It's just, that would match what I'm doing. And from here, again, it looks like nothing. But, if we run out here, and we go to Rendered. Now we're starting to get a glow because we've got a light source inside our frosted glass planetary sensor dome. And you may say, Eric, why green? Well, let me show you. This is a shot from when they were doing test shots of the 11-foot model. They hadn't decided on the warp engine effect. So this is after uh, the first pilot um, and obviously after the second pilot because the warp dish has already been cut down. So uh, this is being done for uh, the production run and they wanted to put lights on the warp engines and, and uh, since they started filming in like 1963 or 1964 and they went through two pilots, which I think everybody knows, which was not, not unheard of back in the day, but really, really unusual. It just did not happen very often. Um, <clears throat> and they had sunk a lot of money into it and the NBC said, all right, look, we like some things about your, your first pilot. Uh, one of the execs who screened the first pilot said that he felt like he was really in a spaceship. So they, they wanted to give it another shot. And one of the things that you got to keep in mind is uh, for early in the 1960s and mid and late 1960s, color television was new. Not every, number one, not every house had a television. And those who had television uh, generally speaking, had black and white. I know that I had black and white for many years when I was growing up as a little kid. And then we got my grandfather's uh, television. When he got a new one, he gave us his old color TV. And I watched TV in glorious color back then. But here's the answer to my why green. Notice the color of this planetary sensor and the fact that they had already put the phaser nipple on, right? But it's green. Oh, Eric, this is a terrible photograph. We'll tell you what. If you get at, if you buy the Roddenberry Vault uh, Blu-rays, you can actually see some of those warp engine effects. They put weird lights that cast strange shadows and stuff in the warp engines. 
And remember, they were testing it out. Now, the paint job for the Enterprise was pretty much the first season production paint job. You can see that they had retained the uh, uh, smears and, quote, dirt, space dirt, I think they called it, and so on. Uh, and they had uh, the uh, shortened uh, dish. And you can actually see the uh, color inside here for the production run was not hull color. Later on, it, it went hull color again uh, by the uh, end of the Trouble with Tribbles. But this was this kind of, Gary Kerr calls it an antique gold, or I've seen it described as copper slash gold. <coughs> Pardon me. The dish itself was a copper color, which you can actually a little clearer, see a little clearer over here. But there's a couple of shots during the original series where the Enterprise is far away, and as the model is turning slightly and the camera is getting closer, the light hits that dish straight on, and it sh it gives you a copper shine. Uh, so that's a, a copper-painted disc. Obviously, the disc was not copper. And I had always assumed this spike was silver. But Gary Kerr uh, has listed it as brass colored. But of course, all, all of that, I'll, I'll get to all of that while we're uh, doing our materials for our model. But here, <coughs> there is a light inside the green dome. So here, without the light on, you can see that that's particularly green looking. Here, it looks less green. Now, that's just because of the bright white light coming through it. And then on top of that, they used to take these pictures, draw a mask where all the blue is. That's what the blue screen is for back then. It was called photographically invisible blue. But you, you could take it and project your film onto a piece of white card or paper and trace your model, right, with a pencil. And then have somebody black out all the areas that weren't modeled. And then you photograph those, all of those pieces of paper like an animation, and you use that as what's called a black holdout mat. And then you reversed it. And you had the model black. You didn't have to go back and do it again. You just filmed, took that film you made, and you, you uh, flip the brightness so that the white where you had the model is now black. You make it a negative image. And, and where it was black for the uh, outside the model is now white. And you, you put that black where the model is on top of your star background uh, that you painted back then uh, by hand. And then you take that resulting film, so you've got this black silhouette of the Enterprise going where, over the stars so that the stars didn't shine through the model. And then on top of that, you took the... Uh, enterprise that you filmed and you put black around the model and then you impose the white lights of the stars with the blacked out enterprise on the image of the enterprise with a blacked out background so the stars in the background shine through so you've gone through like three four generations of film to turn out your special effect and what happened you lost a lot of detail. You can see a tremendous amount of detail here. This is a very nice image. But you lose all this detail and you lose a ton of the colors. Um, but that's why the I, I stated that I'm trying to make it look like the production. And in a couple of shots, you can still see, like especially in the immunity syndrome, where the background remained black. It had like the least... Uh, amount of work done on it. Those shots of the ship are gorgeous. And you can still see some of the green in the sensor domes. So we're going to do the same uh, up here. Whoops. Z. That's what I want. And I'm going to change that from dome sensor. We're going to take frosted glass. All right. And then I'm going to go down here. I'm going to shift D and duplicate this. I'm going to rotate this. Whoops. Let's turn this uh, so it's 3D cursor. I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. And it's almost in the right spot. 
going to grab Z, move this down uh, into the dome, right? It's too big, so I'm going to scale. Whoops, sorry. Bounding box center. Scale a little bit, and then scale Z, I guess. All right, and let's see how that looks. Nice. Okay. So it's not too bright, but we see a light coming through those domes. And we see that the Enterprise has a slight sheen to it, and it's got a little blue and a little gray. I'm going to show you something that's going to make all of this look much, much better uh, when we are done. I'm going to grab my, my windows. And up until now, I've been calling it glass. And I guess I'll, I'll leave the name. But I'm going to make this another mix shader because the glass shader is actually too accurate for what I want for this model. Um, again, I'm trying to make this look like the production run uh, USS Enterprise, the 11 foot model. And they didn't have uh, real glass in there. They had plastic that they had cut and put into those window holes that they cut into the model. And then they, they kind of just sanded them or, or they used a frosted a bit of plexiglass, one or the other. Uh, and you, if you cast your mind back or, or just uh, watch the original effects uh, that came with the series, you never saw into the rooms with one exception, and that's for the Menagerie, the two-part episode, because you never actually saw the cage, which, again, that was the working title of the first pilot. They changed it to Menagerie. It didn't sell. So they went back and just to keep things different, called it the cage again, uh, and then came up with a concept to wrap that story into uh, into a story where Kirk is being threatened with court martial Spock. They're going to court they're going to court martial Spock uh, after he mutinies and steals the Enterprise. So uh, they used bits of the first pilot, most of the first pilot, uh, as evidence for Spock why he's trying to uh, do something kind for his captain. Anyway, uh, you went from below the Enterprise, and it was the 11-foot model, up over the lip of the uh, saucer here, and dove into the bridge, kind of, with a camera. Uh, and you could so you could see actually into the bridge. It's the only time that they ever did that. Uh, the rest of the time, you could never even see into the rooms. You just saw lights. So that's what we're going to replicate. So I'm going to, I'm going to change this from glass to another mix shader. And then, uh, the first one I'm going to pick is actually glass, but we're going to make a, a couple of changes. First, we're going to, we're going to bump up the roughness. So 0.3 at least. And I think we leave the, uh, IOR, but down here for the second shader. We're going to choose something a little different. We're going to tr uh, choose uh, translucent. Not transparent, but translucent. And I think we just leave it like that. Now, we haven't got any lights in place yet. So this isn't going to look like it makes a... It's not going to look like it makes a giant change. It's just when we render, it won't be quite as black. Um, like you can see here here and down on the neck. These have to be changed. So these have a different texture that I was trying. I'm just going to get rid of that. And then we're going to pick our glass. So now if we go back, that'll look pretty much like the rest of the windows that we've got. Yeah, it's not as black, but there are no lights behind it yet. So nothing seems to really be going on with them. But trust me, for materials, this is fine. Next. Uh, let's see. We've got 
some details here that are going to need some different colors. So dark hull gray. Again, I just went with a quick diffuse last time. We're going to uh, we're going to make it a little better. Uh, so I'm going to leave the name, but I'm going to change this from diffuse to mix. And then the first uh, shader, I'm going to pick diffuse. And I'm going to run in here to the color. I'm going to keep hex selected. And I'm going to type in uh, 80827F, like, uh, F like uh, Francisco, right? Um, and then I'm going to, uh, this is going to be a little weird. I am actually going to add a little bit of gloss. So glossy BSDF, and I'm going to put in the same hex. Uh, and I th think the only thing I need to do is... I need to add some rough, roughness. So I'm going to, although it's diffuse, I'm going to bump it up to a, a 5. And then I'm going to bring this down to 0.1. So now, the way this factor works is it was at 0.5. So that was 50% diffuse and 50% gloss. And I don't want it very glossy. I'm unsure why it works this way, but Whatever the top color is, if you turn the factor down, you get more of the top color. If you turn the factor up, like if I turn this to 1, then it's all gloss. So in this case, I'm going to make it 0.1 because I want it mainly to be diffuse, but I want some gloss. So let's see how that's going to look. And that's not bad. And, of course, my uh, rib section on the uh, box, on that flux chamber thing, uh, has acquired, because I, I have it also listed as dark hull gray. And then this uh, circle here is hull gray. But, and, and, and Gary Carrot says that that's hull gray. But I suspect that that's wrong. I suspect that the round balls in the back of the warp engines have actually the pilot gray uh, or, or maybe a, a, a lighter lighter gray than the hull because it always seemed to me to be slightly lighter. But for right now, hull gray is perfectly fine. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to now, let's see here, Z. And I'm going to run down here. I'm going to grab this uh, dome light in the back. I'm going to get rid of rid of the texture uh, material that we've got there, and we're going to pick frosted glass. Um, and, uh, heck, we can just shift D, copy that dome. I'm going to uh, make sure it's on bounding box and scale it down. Right? Grab that, move it up. And believe it or not, I'm, I'm going to turn that one the second one now we've got inside, I'm going to get rid of this material and I'm going to add uh, our uh, green light. Uh, where are you? Green sensor light. Ah, no, I didn't change my viewport color. There we go. Alrighty, let's see how that looks. Now, there were actually three lights in there. So if you want to knock yourself out. Oh, I didn't. It's a little low. Um, bump this up to two. We may make changes, but that's bad. That's not bad. We can see that it's lit. It's not overpowering. Doesn't make the, though it does make the domes overpowering here. So, um, I guess take this back to one. And I'm going to scale up this little light here. Scale larger. Just got to be smaller than the dome. Grab. 
and put it down like that. All right, so let's take a look at that one more time. It'll look kind of like this when it's rendered. That's that's pretty good. We can see that it's lit. All right. Next. Oh, these here. I've got them as black, but that's wrong. They're actually that dark hull gray. And even though we haven't got uh, any pattern on them yet, they'll look a little closer to the original if we have the correct uh, material on there. And we can do a couple of things. We can add... Um, we can add uh, a transparency uh, texture on it later that'll give it those holes that we want, those uh, th they're pill-shaped holes. Um, now, this is interesting. Uh, Gary has these listed as pilot uh, gray, but I think it looks too light with pilot gray. Um, so I'm going to go with a medium hull gray. You are free to do what you wish. But I'm going to make this hull medium gray. And yes, sometimes I use British spelling. Sorry. All right. So like all of our other uh, text, uh, materials today, I'm going to turn this into a mix shader. And I'm going to, uh, of course, for the first one, I always pick Diffuse. And I'm going to put a different hex in here. And this time it's A like Apple, D like David, A like Apple, D like David, A like Apple, 6. And then we're going to run down here to the shader. We're going to pick a Glossy. And we're going to, of course, pop in the same hex code. And we're going to take our diffuse up to, say, 0.4. And bring our factor down to 0.1. Because it's going to be pretty bright, even without anything else. So that's a whole medium gray. I'm going to add whole medium gray to, to these as well. And this. You want them all the same color, no matter what you pick. Um, but if we go to this right now and look at kind of what it's going to look like when it's rendered. All right, this is starting to look better. The uh, slightly more complex materials are starting to make it look more like an actual model, like a like a real physical uh, world thing. All right, and I've put it off as long as I can, but let's uh, work on the three most complex materials that we're going to add to the ship today. And that's here. Uh, the spike, which I have silver, we're going to take to brass. The dish, we're going to make a kind of a copper color. And then we're going to take these concentric circles and we're going to give them either an antique gold or, or a gold slash copper color. Uh, first, I'm going to pick the copper dish. All right. So we've got, I've got Hulk Gray on it just so that it would render 
uh, the same as the rest of the ship, but I'm going to get rid of that. Do I have a copper color? I do not. So I'm just going to hit new and I'm going to call it copper. Okay. But I'm not going to do anything else here. If you hit down control and the left shift key, as you can see here, you get to the, uh, you get to the, uh, what do they call it? Node editor. Yeah, of course. All right, and down here there are some choices, including for textures, for images, and for us, lucky for us, materials. So since I've got my copper dish selected, right? I'm going to take this and I'm going to go to uh, render. All right. So it's it's literally got nothing except a kind of a flat, diffuse white. And that's fine, but we're not going to keep that. So I'm going to move my material output over here. I'm going to take my diffuse, uh, and I'm going to delete it. Notice we see an instant change down here. It's literally got no, nothing feeding the material output. So in other words, it's just black. And we are going to add uh, a... A glossy so that's uh, I think they do shift a and that's uh, shader right and glossy okay so here's here's glossy and for right now we'll just connect that to surface so it gets something and because it's glossy its roughness is down and it's got uh, GGX as the uh, type of glossy and we're gonna leave that what we're gonna change is the hex for the uh, copper. So I caught a guy's a tutorial, and he made a very nice, What this is going to be called a procedural texture, but it's really still a material. And he had done some research and came up with what he thought were pretty nice copper uh, hex colors. So I'm going to use the same ones. This first one, we're going to type in uh, A, like Apple, D like David, 6, F like Frank, 6, 9. And you'll notice it's already starting to look a little more copper. It's, it's not perfect, but it's not bad. So now we're going to add some more. Uh, I should put a link to this fellow's tutorial, but we're going to pick an anisotropic shader and we're going to give it a slightly different uh, hex code. It's going to look similar, but it will be different. So we want C like Charlie, B like Brown, 6, D like Delta, 5, and I think we leave all the rest of that the same. And then to influence, these are going to go to a, uh, well, instead of telling you, let's just show you. So shift A, and we want a mix shader, right? Pop this up here, grab this, and bring it here. Now you'll notice looking a little more copperish, right? But there are a couple of things wrong with us. First, Straight materials, and I really should have done this with the other materials too, but straight materials never look real because there's no variation to them. So we're going to add some variation to this, and we're going to influence the glossiness uh, of the... Uh, kind of, it's not actually a texture, but it'll be a bump map that we add. And so we're going to make changes to the bump map. And also, when you look at anything that's got a copper color, it tends to have, from the reflected light, kind of a bluish hue. So we're going to add all of that to this. And one of the 
and, and the first way to prepare for that is we're going to add another uh, glossy shader. But we're going to give it yet a third hex uh, color. So this is different than the other two hex colors we've had. But again, it will look similar. So that's C like Charlie. Whoa. Yep, hang on. Just zoom in here, make it a little easier to see. C like Charlie, 87533. All right, great. That'll come into play in a little bit. What we can do is we can actually throw in another mix shader here. Where are you? There you are. And we're going to have, let's, let's hook this up here. This to the top, this to the bottom. Okay. We're going to leave that in place for now. We're not done. What we're going to do is, well, we might as well add the bumps in the normal texture now. So, uh, shift A, whoops. Sorry. Shift A. And we want, uh, I'm trying to remember how to find this. I think just click search and type bump. There it is. So here's the bump. And we're going to take this bump. I think we plug this in. Yeah. We're going to plug this into the uh, normal for all three of these. We're going to take the strength and make that something. Uh, I'll leave it for now, but we're going to we're going to change that. The first thing we're going to do is it's it's not actually having an effect yet because we haven't got any kind of a bump coming in. So we're going to add one. We're going to add a noise texture. Here we go. And this will just, again, it, it's a procedural thing. But we're going to take this noise texture and we're going to connect it to height. And we get, wow, this wacky thing. So we're going to make some changes. First, scale. We're going to increase that to 10. Leave the detail at 2. But here, remember I said we were going to change the strength of the bump map. So we're going to take this down to something like 0 0.015. All right, so it's hard to see it here, but it is having an influence. Um, distance, I guess, we can leave alone. And it's still not exactly what we want, but it is looking a lot more copperish. What we want now is to add that um, bluish uh, tendency here. So we're going to add another anisotropic shader. And I'm going to take the uh, same bump map and hook that to the normal, right? And I want a little bit of blue. Now, it really shouldn't matter. It's just I'm going to use what I've used before because I, I, I like it. It's this hex. That's uh, 8, E like Echo, C like Charlie, 9, C like Charlie, B like Brown. Right? And you get this nice blue. What we'll do is we'll hook that to yet another mix shader. So I'm going to pop this in here, right, and take this anisotropic and give it this blue here. But it's completely kind of overtaken with just hints of copper. And we, we want that reversed. We want to control where that bluish tint comes off of. And they call that a layer weight. So shift A. I'm going to Type layer. Oh, there it is. <laughs> layer weight. All right, so I'm going to pop that here. 
right? And it's already at 0.5, and we want the Fresnel, and we're going to pop that right into the factor. And now it's essentially done for our purposes. It looks okay here, but it's going to look even better when we render, I think. So it's got some noise detail to it that's really tiny. There, It looks like there are subtle imperfections in the copper color. Uh, and it's working out kind of nicely. Now we're going to make some uh, make some more changes we're going to because we've already created this copper color and we put a lot of work into it we're going to kind of use it for creating some of our other materials so i'm going to take this which has been silver up until now i'm getting rid of the silver on our spike because we want that to be uh brass so i'm actually going to go grab our copper, and I'm going to hit plus. And it makes it copper dot one, or copper dot zero zero one. I'm going to change that to brass. Okay, cool. But here's the great thing about that. We kept everything from our brass, uh, from our copper. And it's actually similar with different hex values. I went and I searched out hex values that I like, uh, for my for my brass what i find interesting is most of it is actually going to be the same we're leaving the same setup but we're changing the hex values for each of these so the top one here we're going to make whoops Yeah. All right. I wanted to zoom in here to make that a little easier to see. So that's hex value of C like Charlie 9, C like Charlie 1AB. I'm going to put all these numbers down in the uh, in the description below so that you guys can just copy and paste if you really want. Uh, the anisotropic is going to be different. going to be B like brown, D like delta, B like brown, A like alpha, 8, F like Frank. And then finally, the last change, this is it. This is what takes it and makes it look brass. You'll notice it looks kind of gold right now, but wait till you change this glossy. All right. So that hex is A like alpha, a like Alpha, A like Alpha, 5, 8, F like Franklin. All right. Again, it doesn't look like much here, but it's different enough, and it's reflective, and it's got its own slightly yellowish coloring that I really think is effective. To me, that looks really good, especially when you render it out. And I'm going to show you some stuff about rendering today as well, uh, as long as we have time. I'm going to have to split this into two. So this will be the end of the first bit of materials, and the next uh, tutorial will show you more, the uh, anti-gold or, or copper slash gold material, and then we'll go to the warp engine and even do some materials for the lights and so on. See you in the next tutorial.